AMD's Radeon RX 9060 XT continues to be a standout GPU right now, perfectly hitting that sweet spot for price to performance and, well, making it a top contender for anyone building a new system or looking for a solid upgrade. When it comes to picking an AIB or adding board model, the market is full of options, each bringing its own unique style. And today, we're taking a look at the XFX RX 9060 XT Swift OC White. This isn't just another custom card. For enthusiasts building an all-white setup, this card immediately grabs your attention, as XFX has gone for well, a super clean look, stripping away unnecessary bells and whistles. While it does come pre-factory overclocked right out of the box, you won't find flashy, over-the-top RGB. Instead, the focus is on having a pristine, straightforward design which should appeal to lots of people, even if it means this particular model will cost a little more than the base MSRP. So, how does this clean, white GPU perform in the real world? Well, that's what we're going to find out. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. I may be old, but I've got character. 4 gig of RAM, integrated graphics, Windows Vista. Yeah, I'm a bit too young for you. I may not be fast, but I glow in 16 million colors. 30 FPS on 1080p medium settings. No, sorry, I go for more than just good looks. Oh. Oh, hello there. Ryzen 7 9800X3D, strong and intelligent. MSI MPG X870E carbon Wi-Fi, built for speed and stability. You'd never let me down, would you? MSI RTX 5090 Supreme SoC, you're so playful. Be Quiet Shadow Base 800FX, tall, dark and handsome. And you come with four ARGB fans. You really know how to set the mood. Five years labor, two years parts, 12 month collect and return warranty. I think I'm in love. Oh. The Ultra 5090 system from Cyberpower PC, the only gaming PC worth swiping right on. Click the link in the description to find out more. So right out of the box, the Swift OC White makes a statement. The most immediate thing that you'll notice is its pristine white finish, which is a huge win for anyone aiming for a clean or white build. This isn't just a white shroud slapped onto a standard card. It's a thought out design that would look great in a build which tries to focus on looking clean and minimalistic, but in a good way. The card uses a matte white finish, giving it a kind of premium, almost ceramic like feel in your hand. While it's not designed to be as visually intricate as some of its flashy arrivals, its simplicity and solid construction does give it a robust build quality. And even for a GPU that's on the cheaper end of the market, generally speaking, it still feels extremely solid. Now, in terms of the cooler, it has a pretty standard triple fan setup, and the fans themselves are well, straightforward, featuring standard blades and focusing purely on efficient airflow rather than over-the-top visuals. They don't include intricate hubs or overly complex textured fan blades. Instead, XFX has gone for a functional, no-frills approach that seems to prioritize performance and a clean appearance, and that's also why we only see well, a simple little X on the middle of the hub of the fans that can be seen as the light bounces on it. The fans all spin in the same direction too, which is something we've seen be pretty consistent with XFX, while other brands sometimes have the middle fans spin in the opposite direction, though we will see if that makes a difference in our testing. Also, unlike other more expensive cards in the XFX range, these fans aren't easily removable, which I guess would have been nice to see, like we have on the higher tier, magnetically removable versions, but I also get that XFX are trying to be as aggressive as possible with the price on this model. So I guess some things have to give to be able to hit the price point that they wanted to go for. In terms of physical dimensions, for a 9060 XT, this card it's on the larger side. It measures in at roughly 290 millimeters long, 135 millimeters high, and about 55 millimeters thick, meaning that it's a 2.7 slot thick card. While somewhat chunky, I guess, for this class of card, it should still fit comfortably into most standard ATX cases, though those pushing for a small form factor build will want to double check their clearances just in case. Now, despite size, the card still feels incredibly solid when it's in your hand, weighing in at 1,165 grams. The weight, again, definitely helps in making the card feel robust and just speaks to the quality of the heatsink and the internal components, because that adds to that all-important build quality argument, though there will definitely be lighter and heavier 9060 XTs on the market, so I guess this kind of sits somewhere in between. Now, as it's not the largest or heaviest card on the market, XFX don't include a stand or a mount to avoid GPU saying, which I get, as again, it helps to cut costs down, but other brands do include something. But I guess it's not exactly a deal breaker, at least not to me. 
Now, arguably one of the areas you're more likely to see once installed, whether that's vertically or horizontally, is the top of the card. And well, this sticks with that clean, uncluttered theme. There's no over the top branding or expansive RGB. Instead, lighting is kept to a minimum with just a subtle amount of light on the XFX logo along the top edge. And the only other branding really is the Radeon logo at the opposite end. There's also a slightly beveled edge to tie the top into the main part of the shroud, which just stops it looking like one big block and just kind of goes along with that design philosophy. Now, unlike other attempts at white cards we've seen in the past, this definitely ticks all the right boxes and, well, in theory, should be perfect for those who want their card to blend into an all white or even a monochrome build rather than kind of directly stealing the show with vibrant light shows. You also find the single 8 pin power connector here, which is recessed into the cooler, as the PCB sits quite a bit lower. This kind of small detail means that your power cable won't be pressing against your side panel, preventing potential cable strain and ensuring just overall a tidier look, especially in tighter cases. Moving around to the rear, a full white metal backplate covers the entire PCB, featuring, well, no branding at all. Instead, we just see some simple artwork that stems from the slits that assist in airflow. And this just helps to tie into that large cutout behind the card's large heatsink to help push heat away from the card. The backplate features rolled edges that, again, add to its clean styling, and this also wraps around to the end of the card. Though, in all honesty, I would have liked to have seen the backplate and then the front shroud potentially join on the end, just to enclose things a bit more, as you do get, a, I guess, a glimpse of the heat pipes. And for a card that looks super clean, I don't know, I just feel it cheapens it slightly and makes it look a little industrious, which I guess is clearly not the look that it's aiming for. The rear I.O. is straightforward, taking up two physical slots in your case and featuring a typical XFX style ventilation. It features two DisplayPort 2.1A connectors and a single HDMI port, which is a change up from what we've seen on other brand cards where they've opted for two HDMI ports and a single DisplayPort instead. Though most modern monitors will, I guess, have both connectors, so it's not a big deal. And it still allows for multi-monitor setups and has support for high resolutions. Taking the card apart is pretty easy as each part is essentially individual and doesn't require intricate screws to remove one part before the other. Instead, the backplate can be removed and the fan shroud along with heatsink come off as one as well, though can be separated for cleaning and maintenance should you ever need to. The heatsink is well, one large single block that spans the full length of the PCB and beyond, with a cold plate that makes direct contact for both the GPU core and those all-important VRAM modules, while other slim, smaller plates on the card make direct contact with the VRMs to give the best chance of bringing the best thermal dissipation. The back plate also helps with cooling with two small heat pads, which, with this card being a 16 gig version, helps to transfer heat away from the memory ICs that sit on the rear of the PCB. Much like we've seen with other models as well, the PCB is quite small, at least in comparison to the cooler, and comes in at 165 millimeters long. And again, much like we've seen on other models, we find a seven phase VRM design for the GPU core, along with a one plus one phase VRM setup for the GDDR6 memory. All phases are monolithic power systems MP87993 Dr. Moss chips and are rated at 50 amps each, while both the GPU and the memory phases are handled by two MPS MP2868A controllers. In terms of the memory, there are four Samsung GDDR6 ICs on the front of the PCB surrounding the top and right side of the GPU, while the rear includes another four in the same locations in a kind of mirrored stacked layout. Lastly, in terms of the GPU core, XFX have opted for Honeywell PTM 7950 TIM, and this is something they're kind of using on all of their 9000 series, as it not only helps with heat dissipation, but also is easier to apply in the factory, and also has much better longevity compared to other conventional thermal pastes. Now, as this is a factory overclock card, it comes with boosted speeds right out of the box with a game clock of 2,780 MHz, which is a healthy 10% increase over the reference 2,530 MHz spec. The boost clock also sees an increase now at 3320 MHz, which is a 6% bump from the reference 3130 MHz speed. Interestingly though, these factory overclock figures are exactly what we've seen on other custom cards for this particular GPU, including the Nitro Plus model from Sapphire, so it's going to be interesting to see directly how they compare. Obviously, not being content on sticking with those overclocks, we wanted to see if there was any more headroom available that we could utilize to push our clock speeds even further on both the GPU core and the memory, while also bringing down that all-important voltage in the hopes of well, increasing performance. 
It's here where we increased the power limit by its maximum 10%, but weren't actually able to get any huge numbers in terms of clock speed increases. But, well, we did still get something, with a 70 MHz increase on the core clock and 100 MHz on the memory. Though with RDNA 4, memory overclocking doesn't actually tend to give any huge performance jumps anyway in the real world. That aside, the most important number is the minus 70 millivolt that we were able to achieve, and we'll obviously see what that means for performance a little later on. First, let's take a look at the cooling performance of the card at stock during an hour-long F1 run at 4K on max settings to simulate a real-world gaming session. It's here where we found our GPU temperature averaging around an impressive 58 degrees, while the memory was equally impressive, peaking at just 70 degrees throughout, all while the fans stayed whisper quiet at just over 1100 RPM, making it one of the quietest cards that we've ever tested. As a pre-overclock card, power remained consistent around the 180 watt mark, and in terms of the clock speeds, we saw it peak at just over 2900 MHz, while memory clocked in at the expected 2500 MHz mark. With our newfound overclock and undervolt, we saw temperatures remaining around the same, with just a small difference in both the GPU and memory temperatures, with one decreasing and the other increasing, all with just a small bump in fan speed that still kept the card running quiet. The big differences we saw were in the clock speeds that had the GPU clock running much higher at around 3,250 MHz and the memory clock now coming in 100 MHz faster, though the trade-off was in power, which saw another 20 watts being consumed, though we'll see what that means for any extra gains in real-world games. It's here where in a Plague Tale the XFX does fall short with the rival Sapphire card by just under a 6% margin, which considering the clock speed matches the Sapphire, does go to show that the Nitro Plus card is sustaining those same clock speeds for much longer. The manual overclock does help to push performance up, but we're talking a margin of error one frame per second, so really there's nothing in it, and a more aggressive fan curve could have saved face a little bit and given us better performance overall. As we move over to Black Myth Wukong, we don't see much variance between the XFX and Sapphire card with a single FPS difference in favour to the Nitro Plus card, though the same can be said in favour to the XFX card when it comes to the all-important 1% lows, though as we're in margin of error territory, retesting could see the card swap places anyway. When overclocked, we see XFX take the lead, but it's by no significant margin and would make no real world difference anyway. Lastly, moving over to Cyberpunk again, XFX takes a small backseat to the Sapphire card by a single frame per second in both the averages and the 1% lows. And the overclock sees no real change, with the only difference being in the 1% lows, which shows that even with an overclock and an undervolt, the XFX cooler is at its limits, at least at stock anyway. Taking a look at how temperatures compare to the other 9060 XT that we had on hand, the Nitro Plus is the cooler of the two cards when it comes to the GPU core by a margin of 4 degrees. The overclock even with the undervolt comes in nigh on identically too, while the memory temperature is where we see the XFX card excel as it comes in significantly cooler at both stock and with our manual overclock, which only saw temperatures rise by a small margin of 2 degrees, though even hotter still found the card coming in 10 degrees cooler overall. So summing things up, the XFX Swift OC is a card that, well, truly stands out. Not by trying to be the loudest or the flashiest, but by embracing a simple and understated stance when it comes to design and practical performance. It's for the builder who values a pristine style and a clean, minimalistic look above, well, all else. This isn't just a white card, it's a well-designed card that seamlessly integrates into an all-white, or as I mentioned, monochrome setup, proving that you don't need excessive RGB to make a statement. And it's clear to see that XFX have prioritized, I guess, a thoughtful design, robust build quality, and efficient cooling, all while maintaining, well, a quiet operation. When it comes to gaming performance, the card holds its own very well. While our test showed it might be a whisker behind the Sapphire Nitro Plus in some titles, the differences were often within margin of error, making them negligible in real world gameplay. This card, yes, it comes pre-factory overclocked and it delivers boosted speeds right out of the box. And while our manual overclock didn't yield massive frame rate gains, it did prove that there's still a bit of headroom for enthusiasts to tinker with. And of course, GPU to GPU, results may vary anyway. However, where this card truly shines is in its cooling performance. Despite its relatively chunky size for a 9060 XT, the triple fan setup and large heatsink are incredibly effective. We saw impressively low GPU temperatures and even more impressive memory temperatures, which well, ended up significantly cooler than its rival. What's more impressive is that well, it did this while remaining whisper quiet, with fan speeds rarely exceeding 1100 RPM at stock. And then, even when overclocked, the card remained barely audible. This level of thermals and low noise output is a significant win for XFX, and especially for a card in this kind of price bracket. Now talking about price, that is of course always the trickiest part. 
The Swift OC will always come in with a slight premium over a base MSRP card, but I think it's clear to see why with its clean design and higher quality components that leads to the exceptional thermals and that all important quiet operation. The 9060 XT itself is already positioned as a sweet spot when it comes to price to performance, and this version just takes that value proposition and just, well, layers on a premium finish. Ultimately, if you're building an all-white PC and looking for a clean, minimalistic look, this card is undoubtedly one of the best options on the market. It delivers excellent performance, outstanding thermals, and noise that's hard to beat at this tier. While the price premium may not be for some, for those who value a unique design, this card makes a very strong case for itself. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, we've got a Patreon where you can support what we do while also getting access to some really cool extras, including behind the scenes content, a super special area on our Discord, and much, much more. The link is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.